Hello and welcome to In The Down Row. I'm your host, Georgette Taylor, and I'm so excited to have you join us today. And as always, excited to have such a great guest with us. Today, we have Denise Johnson. She is the creator and producer of the YouTube show, uh, All Dialed Up, the series, where she uh, does an amazing show with her, with her two daughters, um, ages 10 and 7. She is also a writer and an author, and I'm so excited to speak with her about, uh, about, about what she does with the series. Well, thank you so much for joining us in the doll world, Denise. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, so I'm excited too. I want to talk about your, your doll journey from uh, where you started and how you ended up here on the show today. Well, um, our girls have always had lots of dolls. <laughs> Where the, where the concept for the show started was actually when uh, COVID had hit mm -hmm. and it was before I was laid off from my part-time job. Um, uh, our youngest daughter said, you know, come play with us. So we started playing with the dolls and I was like, let's just record it because the girls like to watch other kids play on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's what I to watch. So we recorded a little mini clip on my old phone and, and I like it. <laughs> and then I say, you want to do a show? And it just kind of went from there. <laughs> but that's where it started. So they played with a lot of dolls. Uh, did you play with a lot of dolls when you were growing up? I did. And I wish that I still had my old dolls, but I don't have them anymore. But <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> yes. Yeah, when you start learning about the doll community, you realize, oh, my gosh, I wish I had that doll, right? They could be I worth so much money. You know? <laughs> so. That's true. <laughs> Never think about it. Never think about it that way. So when you were growing up, did you play, were you told the dolls that you had, um, were they, were they African-American dolls? Were they, they Caucasian dolls? Like what was your doll yeah. journey in that sense? They were African-American dolls. Like mm -hmm. my parents were big on me playing with dolls that looked like me. Mm -hmm. So all the dolls looked like me. <laughs> that's, that's what I grew up with. Okay. Well, that was great. Well, yes, your parents made sure that that happened for you. Um, oh, yeah. Did that happen the same way with your daughters? Like, were you very conscious of that or you just let them play with whatever dolls that they chose to play with? Yeah, we're conscious of that. I mean, a lot of times they do get gifts um, from other people. So, you mm -hmm. know, we accept those gifts. But yeah, we're very conscious about what type of dolls we get. Um, I didn't really realize back then when they first started playing with dolls that there's so many different diverse types of dolls with diverse types of hair and textures and that all the dolls don't look the same. I didn't really know that going mm -hmm. in. So now I'm getting into different dolls with different hair textures and kind of experiment with that. But okay. yeah, we're big on representation. I think that is great too, because especially the children coming up today, they have such more variety of, like you said, a diversity within the dolls that they play yeah. with that more than we had, more than we had opportunity to have, you know? So, so that's, a, that's a great opportunity for them. So they're 10 and they're seven. And so what are they, so what's everybody's role in the show, the all about the, the series? We? <laughs> <laughs> well, we all create. So we kind of sit around and think about the ideas we want to do. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, plan what outfits we want to have, where the show is going to happen at, like the different sets, the outfits they're going to wear. And then we sit down, like I do have a blueprint Mm -hmm. of where we're going to go with the episode but a lot of it is improv so we don't know what's going to happen until we sit down and do it <laughs> but we basically all create and now the girls are getting into editing yeah so they, maybe i should call them up <laughs> <laughs> maybe so so they figured out how to edit on like the goldfish movie maker app so wow. then they started editing so now they they did a couple of scenes on one of our episodes where they want to just hold the camera so i work with them on holding the camera still you know the phone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's pretty interesting yeah. But yeah, we're getting into that. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's a great opportunity, though, because, you know, not only are they learning like about the dolls and and and, and, and play, they're also getting other skills, you know, from doing the right. show. So that's great. Editing. Right. Wow. That's awesome. Pretty cool. <laughs> I do like that. You are a writer and an author. And do you write articles? Do you write books? I do write articles, mm -hmm. um, but my husband and I, we have a children's book for kids learning how to read. So it's mm -hmm. called Lotus and Lily Go to the Park. It's actually on Amazon. Okay, Lotus and Lily Go to the Park. Okay. That's so cool. what inspired us at the time was our youngest daughter was just learning how to read. And so we didn't see a lot of books with, you know, Black families in them. Mm -hmm. So we decided to write one. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, the girls at the time, they recorded the audio book. So that was pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty nice. So did you incorporate the book into your series as well? Um, in one of the episodes, we featured the book. 
Mm -hmm. um, but just one, we ha I haven't really quite figured out how to incorporate it <laughs> uh, more, but it's definitely coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's coming. So uh, you started the series, uh, you said, during COVID. Um, uh, and I'm sure it was way, you know, it was a lot of, lot more restrictions than there are now with COVID. So mm -hmm. have you found it's, um, I guess, the, the amount of time that you spend now on the show, is that different because of some of the restrictions that are lifted from COVID? Do you find that you have uh, less time to do, to do more shows? You know what? It's a little less time, but we make it happen. Like my aim is to get an episode out every week. When okay. the kids are on the summer break, I think we were doing more episodes. But no, we make the time because, mm -hmm. you know, the Saturdays we go in there and record. Okay. And then I'll, I'll work on the episode during the week. Okay. All right. Has, has what you thought about doing in the show changed when you first started to, 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 to have a show is now? Has anything yeah. changed within that time? And, and what has that been? Um, the first couple episodes, we were just playing, just straight playing and improv the whole thing and recording it. Mm -hmm. And now it's more so I'm thinking of what we're going to teach the kid with the episode. So it's play, but I'm very intentional about, okay, let's not just play, mm -hmm. but let's teach the kid. So mm -hmm. while they're watching TV, you may as well teach them something. So mm -hmm. I'm like, let's say the kids want to do an episode. They might want to do a fairy tale over again. So I say, okay, now let's decide what we're going to teach them. Okay. So that's more of what it is now. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So it's more teaching and learning type but of show. In the beginning, it was just play <laughs> strictly play strictly play okay so do they bring you ideas on what they want to uh to learn or what they want to teach um sometimes sometimes they do but more so it'll just be an idea like we recently did a retelling of jack and the beanstalk mm. so they want to do jack and the beanstalk okay. and so I, okay how can we kind of put a spin on it you know to do it the all dolled up way and so i'll <laughs> then, okay, how can you put a spin on it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what I said. They'll come to me with an idea, and I'm like, okay, how can we put a spin on this and put it out? Right. Okay. Okay. So something's just a little different. All right. well, I, my goal really is to teach stuff that I want them to learn and apply to real life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's the whole point. I try to say, okay, well, what do I want to teach them? So my goal is when they run into that situation in real life, they'll think about the episode and they'll mm -hmm. say, okay, well, Caitlin did this, so let me do this. That's my goal. Okay. All right. That's cool. I like that. I like that idea. I like that, you know, bringing that. And it's like, well, what, what do I want to teach them, you know, while they're growing up, you know, and, and impart that lesson on them. So I think that's pretty cool. But yeah. What are your goals for the next, I don't know, six months of the show or the next year of the show? Have you even thought about it that far? Because I, I, I totally understand when you start something, you start it and then you're like, oh, now it's become this. And now I have to think on that level. So and, you know, I'm always asking the girls, like, every time we do an episode, okay, you want to keep going? Or, like, because we're coming up on the 100th episode. So Yay. we're about to <laughs> That's really exciting. So I'm always asking, okay, you want to go further? You know, we want to stop it. What we want to do? I mean, I would love to do it as, you know, I guess I would say as long as they want to do it. Yes. But my good. main goal, I just want as many kids to watch it. And, you know, parents, too, mm -hmm. so they can see the value in it. Right. So I'm right. just trying to get the word out. That's why I'm so excited about this interview. <laughs> And I really want to get the word out so more people can see it. Right, right. And I, I like, I liked your answer, you know, because it was about the kids too. You want to make sure that they're comfortable doing what it is that they, that they, and, and happy doing what it is that they want to do, and not forcing them. You don't right. need to continue the show because of this or that. And they have to be engaged in it because it is really, um, you know, they're they're so much a part of it, and they're the reason right. Because it does not work started. without them. That's true. That is true. You can't just fire them and hire two other kids, you know. So <laughs> I don't think that'll work. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that'll work either. Who came up with the uh, the name of the show? I probably did. I probably came up with All Dolled Up, and then I realized that it was other pages called All Dolled Up, mm -hmm. and so I put the series on it to make mm -hmm. it a show. Okay. And then we kind of just kicked it around and came up with a theme song. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah like like what can we do how can we make this a thing song all and diy right all diy pretty much <laughs> <laughs> but you know but that's the but i think that's the beauty of it right um uh mm -hmm. because it is you know it is something that you started and you thought oh this is going to be really good for them to be engaged but then mm -hmm. it's like well wait a minute i could do lessons now and i could teach them something and so and i think that's where a lot of great ideas start from. 
is get, just doing it and, and, mm-hmm. and see where it goes, you know? Um, so uh, I do love this series. I love your daughters. They're, they're just, <laughs> they're just so cute. <laughs> voices are so cute. I love it. Um, the other thing too, that I, I love about doing this show too, is because we get an opportunity, like you said, to share things that other people are doing and right. having other people see that you're out there doing that is something that's really important to you in the doll world because I think it's about all the different aspects of the doll community and you doing a show like that here I think is really important um, because it not only just uh, has to do with your with your children but it has to also do with the relationships that you that you have with your children too right you know and not just say hey we're playing together but we're working together and we're you know, and we're doing something together. So I think Mm. that's really cool. You know, I didn't even know it was a dog community. (laughs) I did not know that. I didn't know that there was other adults doing like the same thing I was doing or that love dogs. I didn't know that. So I didn't really realize until I started getting on Facebook and Instagram. And then I started, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm like, there's a lot of people doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I can understand that if you're not in that space, you really don't have an idea what goes on in that space until you're in it. You know? Right. You got to like seek out and look for it or a lot of things you won't find. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So by you doing this, it helped you to see what was in the dog community and the people that are in there, what they're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So has that changed your view on how you do the show? No, I'm okay. still going to do it the same way. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. But it, it just helps me feel like I belong. Just for a while, I'm like, okay, I'm an adult and I'm, I'm playing with toys, you know? <laughs> but it's just that I like to create, period. I'm a creative person. Mm-hmm. I like to sing, you know, I like to write poetry. I've always been that way. Mm-hmm. So this is just another way I get to like bring the creativity. And then it's also like stress relief for me too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but I didn't know it's other people like me. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you're not alone you know you're welcome into the doll community now into the, into like my, the husband doll would literally, my husband would literally come home from work and i would have the dolls sitting around the table on the dining room table <laughs> and he think it's normal he's so used to me doing it like it's yeah, normal he's so used to doing it so you also yeah. do not only do you do uh, uh teach lessons while you're doing the show but you also say you do unboxing so what type of dolls do you unbox is, is do you have a do you have favorite dolls that you got that you guys look for or how does um, that work for you? I believe the first doll, if I'm not mistaken, that we unboxed was Mia, the fresh doll. Mm-hmm. And that's exciting because that was the first doll we had with the curly afro. So okay. that was really exciting. And that was the first doll that we had got outside of Barbie. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in DC Superhero Girls. You know, this was the first doll that looked like Mia. Look, you're familiar with her, right? She was but on the show, Dr. Lisa. She was on the show. We actually mm-hmm. unboxed her, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that nice. was pretty exciting. That was nice. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I think we unboxed the boxing Barbie. Mm-hmm. I don't think we unboxed a lot of Barbie. We did a Barbie uh, vehicle, the okay. big drink vehicle. We unboxed that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Mia was the first doll that we unboxed. So mm-hmm. is there anything else that you think that you might want to include in, or that you're going to include into the show? Um, I really don't know. We've done some crafts. I'm not really a crafty person, but <laughs> we've done some crafts on some episodes. <laughs> but yeah, I just try to do some some different things every now and then. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like um, I put one video together like of Lullaby. So it's 60 minutes of Lullaby music. So that was really different. Oh, okay. So I'm going to put different things out there. Mm-hmm. Useful things. That's, that's the thing I like. You know, I can pretty much go where I want to go with it. Yes. It's like you're your own boss, so yeah. we just do that however we want to go. That's what we can do. Right, that's what I right. do. Well, I'm glad you like doing it. So I mean, I, I think that it. takes off. That takes half the the battle out of out of things. You know, is uh, that you uh, that you appreciate doing it. Plus, it gives you time to spend with your daughters too. So, right. yeah. and then keep them busy. You know, because mm-hmm. <laughs> they're very creative too. And I think since we started doing the show, like their creativity has skyrocketed. So they really? even. Yes, wow. <laughs> but they're very creative. So they like to draw and they like to make up stories. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of episodes we did where they straight improv the whole thing themselves. So mm-hmm. they're just very creative, period. They make up songs. You know, <laughs> as a matter of fact, they're asking me today to record 
um, one of their songs. Mm-hmm. And they need to edit it a certain way and put certain effects. I like. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, they, they're very creative. So, <laughs> like, let's channel this energy somewhere. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, that mm-hmm. well, you know, the the show gives them an the opportunity to do that, and it allows for them to be creative too. So that's a that's a good thing that you're all creative. So I'm sure you will find many many different uh, avenues to go with this show that um, you probably weren't even thinking about before. So I'm glad that things are still happening for you. I'm glad that you guys are still engaged in creating the show. Are you still doing this full time? Part time, but it's very minimal work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not mm-hmm. what I want to do at all. Mm-hmm. So really, I guess you can say I'm doing this full time. You know, we're not making money off of it yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe one day I'm put in the atmosphere because I would love to get paid for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now I'm doing it full time, but I'm not making a full time money yet. If that makes right. sense. Right. <laughs> so actually it's more like, okay, I'm doing this because this is a hobby. This is what I like to do. But, you know, hopefully there will be, you know, financial reward for it one day. I, trust me. I understand it. <laughs> doing the show was that too at one point. Now it's like, oh uh, yeah. Okay. Let's figure out how to monetize this, you know, <laughs> because right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's um, hard too. <laughs> you have to be really creative, I think, a lot of times uh, to figure out how you want to, you know, monetize certain things. And you just got to figure out what works best for you. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like thinking outside the box. Yeah. You know, because, and then what- because a lot of times the things that the, the things that people uh, get monetized don't necessarily fit with what you do. See, and that's one of my concerns. <laughs> like everything has got to make sense. I don't want to just put something out there just to go viral. You see what I mean? Right, right, I want to right. stand for something. Right. I don't want anything we put out to go against, you know, what my vision is. Yes, exactly. Because I think once you do that, then you get caught in that. And then you have to continue that. And so, and you have to be very careful. You are, you are working with children, you know, and you... Right. And, and and they're your children, so you have to, you know what I mean. Make sure right. that that what they're sharing and what they're receiving and what your show is about is something that you know you're going to be proud of, you know, in the end. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like we great. we made a black queen for our show, so we show like Princess Tiana's mom. Mm-hmm. So that was really exciting. We have a dark skinned queen, and she have glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so you know i'm like okay let's show this let's show a black queen on tv right well that's important mm-hmm. that's really important you know um for that to be represented and so they could see that and mm-hmm. uh, and then have opportunity for people you know to have the kids talk about that what does that mean for them you know you do lessons about encouraging creativity being confident what type of show would you say would be a show that talked about being confident you know, what would that what would that show look like and what kind of information would you share about something like that? You mean in terms of one of our episodes? Mm-hmm. Um, confidence. We have an episode called The Cheat Champ. So she's a boxer Barbie. And she's kind of like a tomboy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so a lot of the characters thought she was a boy, but then oh. she dressed up and she's like, okay, I'm just like you. So mm-hmm. I can dress up and be pretty and dainty and I'm not a bully. But, mm-hmm. you know, I don't take being bullied either. Mm-hmm. So she's not going to who she is. Man, nice. Yeah, we have a couple of episodes where there's there's two best friends, Kendallin and Janie. Mm-hmm. And so, like, one of them would want to be like the other. One would want to do what the other's doing. And so they actually swap places in one mm-hmm. episode. So it just kind of shows you, okay, be grateful with who you are. Yeah. Not so much to focus on being the next person. Mm-hmm. And with that, we wanted to show that, you know, sometimes our friends could lead us in the wrong direction. So I mm-hmm. wanted to show that not necessarily just a bully or a mean person, but right. sometimes your friends could lead you in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. So we kind of do a lot of that. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm happy with who I am and what I know how to do. Right, right. Do okay. Even adults can use those yeah. lessons. You know, so. I, can, I can learn from a lot of the episodes. Exactly. Myself. Now, you mentioned something that you want to reach, not just doll lovers or children, you know, who love dolls, but their caretakers. What, is, yeah. um, what would that look like for you? Um, actually, I would, I would hope that the parents or the caretakers would sit down with the kids mm-hmm. and see what they're watching and say, mm-hmm. okay, I like this show. Let's mm-hmm. kind of go through it and binge watch and see what else we can mm-hmm. do. 
Mm-hmm. As opposed to just the kids watching by themselves, I would like the caretakers to sit with them and see what they're watching. Because sometimes it's kids shows that have stuff in there that is, I don't want my girls to see. It's a kid show, but you know some of the language they pick up. Like I don't really want right you know, them to say that. So I would mm-hmm. I would like parents and caretakers to sit down with the kids and watch the show and see the value in it and hopefully spread the word. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. that's okay. what I'm hoping. So it's more about being responsible. Or 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 ha- taking responsibility, more responsibility, I guess, of what your children do watch. You know, know what they watch. You know, right. and also be able to to enjoy the same type of show with them and get and get lessons exactly. out of it. Exactly, because I think a lot of it, like parents will enjoy too, because the episodes are in like kind of like sitcom style. Mm-hmm. So I incorporated like from my favorite sitcoms in the '90s, like the kind of ideas that come to me. Mm-hmm. But I think you both can enjoy it as well um but one thing i wanted to mention too i think it's good to start watching from day one so mm-hmm. you can see kind of the evolution from the editing and the storyline because it's also like a kid's soap opera <laughs> really <laughs> you know you get to know the characters this character would do this this character would say that mm-hmm. you know but you have to kind of watch from the beginning to see all those characters okay all right because well, we have good. probably like we've introduced like 50 characters i want to say but we work with probably like the same 10 11 characters. Oh, okay. All right. That's cool. Okay. So now all those characters, uh, are they family members? Are they just random people? Are they, wh- what are they? What are the different They're characters? Family. So we have like Skipper and Princess Tiana. They're cousins, cousin, sister, best friends. That's what they call <laughs> themselves. And so you get to see their relationship. Mm-hmm. And then there's the fresh doll Mia with fresh doll Malik, her husband. And then Kendallin is the daughter. So she's a typical teenager, always getting in trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, we have two monster high dolls, and so they're the bullies, they're sisters. <laughs> that is like a little, you know, family unit. And those are the main characters. We have Chelsea, so Chelsea's really free spirited and very talented. And um, yeah, so I would say those are the main characters. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. The rest of them are kind of like spin off characters. Spin off characters, okay. Mm-hmm. So now have the spin off characters had their own little show? Or they just stale, no, stay. They're, they're in the show, but they don't really have starring roles, if I could say. Yes. But, mm-hmm. You know, we'll pull them out. We'll say, okay, we haven't seen Ava in a while. So what you think Ava should do? We haven't seen this character in a while. We haven't seen Aaliyah in a while. And then we'll mm-hmm. pull them out and give them a storyline. Okay. All right. The other thing, too, you said you sit down with them and you, you, well, you generally say, well, this is what I want them to learn, maybe. And so this is how we do it. Do you do that on the on the on the same day that you're recording, or is that done mm-hmm. like a separate meeting and then you go into recording? It's separate. It's okay. separate. Like so, let's say we film on Saturday. I edit Saturday, and then probably like Monday or Tuesday, I'm like, okay, what's the next episode going to be about? Okay. Right. <laughs> and then so that way I can start working on it during mm-hmm. the week. Okay. Oh, one thing I wanted to bring up, like the girls, they love Elsa and Anna, so I let them create their own little Elsa and Anna character. <laughs> and so typically when we bring out those dolls, they have like more control over the episode and okay. they just really go wow with that. Okay. But normally, you know, I say, okay, what are we going to do? And then we'll sit down and figure out what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Having them into in, in being so involved in all aspects of the show, I think is so important because it really, you know, like you were saying that how you felt like you belong, it really gives them more of a feeling of belonging and that you know, what they're doing is important and mm. that they have control over what they're doing and participating in it. You know, I think that mm-hmm. makes a, that's really, um, I think that's really helpful for them in their growth of who yeah. they are as people, you know? So I love the way that they, you all interact um, with each other. Uh, does your partner help you with editing or anything else or? He doesn't edit. But um, sometimes I'll be talking to him about an idea I want to do. And he say, you know what? You should do this. Or you can make him do this. Or you can make this doll do this. I don't think he like me giving him credit <laughs> on some of the episodes. I'll say, you know, with ideas from dad. You know, but he'll give his ideas. <laughs> That's cool. And you know what? I didn't mention that on the book that we did, he actually did the illustrating. And oh, I should have nice. been talking about the book. But he did the picture. So he had a vision that he wanted to see in terms of the black black dad and the strong mm-hmm. black male in the family. Mm-hmm. So he had his ideas that he'll bring to me. And I'm like, I like that. I'll incorporate it. Right. So, okay. So he doesn't help with the editing or he won't voice the character. I keep telling him, I'm like, we're hiring. But <laughs> he's not going to voice the character. <laughs> but he gives some ideas. 
That's good. That's it would help good. if you voiced keratins. <laughs> yes. It, it probably would help a little bit, but you know, I understand. Okay. <laughs> Mostly the girls, they voice the characters. Okay. So I think I only voice three or four of all the dolls regularly. Okay. And they have some, they have about three each characters that they always voice specifically the same girl for the role. And okay. then they take turns for the others. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. But dad still hasn't jumped on board yet. Okay. Wait, I don't think he's, <laughs> I don't think he's... <laughs> he's not, he's not ready yet. It's all good though. <laughs> so you started in, in March of 2020. How many shows do you say you have now? You well, have? actually, yeah, March 2020. Um, we're on the 100th episode. Wow. Okay. But we've done some unboxings in between, you know. Okay. Right. So that's great. So I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that you uh, said yes to being on the show because um, I really wanted people to know about what you're doing uh, so that they could support you. You know, I mean, that's the that's the one thing about the doll world. We're not just talking to people who've been out there for years and years. You know, we we, we, we talk to, to everybody and we really want the, the person who is, you know, the doll maker, the icon, you know, uh, that establish certain dolls and we want we want the smaller doll companies and smaller doll people who are doing things within the doll community to be seen too, just as much as the, the people who are already seen out there. So I really do thank you for your time being here and talking about your all dolled up, the series uh, with you and your daughters. And, and I'm excited for people to see it and I'm excited for people to, to follow you and, 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 and see what you're about. I'm excited too. <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm happy you had me on. Well, thank you. Thank you for being on In the Doll World with me, Denise. I appreciate your time. Thanks so You're much. Welcome. Oh, but oh yeah. So before we go, though, make sure you let everybody know where they can see your series at. Okay. Just oh, there. we're on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some episodes on Daily Motion for anybody who watches Daily Motion. Okay. And everybody can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. The Instagram, mm -hmm. well, the social media channels are fairly new, mm -hmm. but um, you can see kind of like a little more behind the scenes, more things and on YouTube. So okay. yeah, okay. YouTube, man, Instagram, Facebook, and we're on Daily Motion. Okay, and it, it's all under all dolled up the series. Yes, okay. all dolled up. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Denise, for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Bye, right. guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody.